On our broadcast tonight, real or fake? Is there a chance the latest runaway Prius was a hoax? What really happened on that freeway? Toyota has its doubts. Path of destruction. A massive storm with no name has staggered the Northeast, and it's not over yet. In cold blood, Americans gunned down in Mexico as that country's out-of-control drug war now hits close to home. And the fleecing of America. It's your land. Why aren't you seeing a penny of all the gold being found there? Also tonight, remembering a man who never turned down an impossible mission. Nightly News begins now. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening. At the time, a few days back, we said it had happened again. Another Prius got away from its owner, hurtling 90 miles an hour down a California freeway. Another problem for Toyota, already crippled by recalls and investigations. But then the rumbling started. Was the driver telling the truth? Today, Toyota came out and said what's alleged to have happened on that freeway is inconsistent with what they found when investigating that car. The stories don't match, and this matters a lot to the car maker. We begin here tonight with NBC's Tom Costello. One week after a California driver claimed the gas pedal on his 2008 Toyota Prius became stuck at 90 miles an hour, Toyota said today its engineers found no evidence of any problem with the car, even when they tried to recreate the scenario. That car never did not stop, even with overheated brakes. And investigators from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said they too had been unable to recreate the stuck accelerator and added, we may never know exactly what happened with this car. Engineers are baffled because the Prius has a brake system designed to override the gas pedal. If both the brake and gas pedals are depressed at the same time, the engine is supposed to go to idle and the brakes slow the car. Both Toyota and government investigators did find the front brake pads on the Prius have been almost completely worn down. Even the rotors have been damaged. Toyota says there's evidence the driver, Jim Sykes, lightly rode the brakes off and on more than 250 times over 30 miles, rather than applying constant pressure like he told police. While Sykes' version has been questioned, he stood by his story. Meanwhile, 5.6 million Toyota vehicles are under recall for their floor mats, stuck gas pedals, and stuck brakes. For over 50 years, providing you with safe, reliable, high-quality vehicles. That's got the company aggressively trying to reassure and stabilize its customer base through a TV ad blitz and 0% financing offers, all the while insisting Toyota's electronics are not the problem. Most auto experts agree. I'm really not that suspicious of the electronics. I think the mechanical uh, explanations are certainly believable. And the biggest explanation that no one really wants to talk about is driver error. Studies have shown driver error occurs most often in older drivers, though back in San Diego, Jim Sykes is just 61. Driver error means hitting the gas instead of the brake. Now, Sykes has said he is not interested in suing Toyota, and experts insist tracing these problems can be like chasing ghosts in a machine. They never seem to reappear. And more than 2,600 Toyota owners say their cars have accelerated unexpectedly over the past 10 years, some even after being fixed. Brian. Tom Costello starting us off in our Washington newsroom tonight. Tom, thanks. And tonight, parts of the Northeast look like a wasteland. Trees and wires are down. Homes are dark and cold without power. It's a storm without a name with the same power as a hurricane. It started Saturday morning. It's still going on tonight from New Jersey into New York through Connecticut, Massachusetts. There are states of emergency in several states and the damage is extraordinary. NBC's Mike Taibbi is in one of the hardest hit towns in Connecticut. Mike, good evening. Good evening, Brian. There are still thousands of homes and businesses here in Greenwich that are without power, and so many trees had smashed into power lines as well as houses. Now, um, sorry. Um, the problem is that the storm hit earlier today area of Greenwich. Look at the huge pine tree that fell from their neighbor's yard onto and through the north side of their house and know they were lucky they weren't home reading Saturday night in that room as they usually are. Thank God by doing that we escaped death. From waterlogged Washington DC to the coastal and riverside towns in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. 
Rainwater and high water and relentless winds made for a miserable weekend and a daunting task of recovery for millions. It wasn't that the forecasters missed it, they didn't. Powerful wind, dangerous surf. But few expected that the storm would trigger more 911 calls in New York City, 65,000, than the 9-11 attacks. Or well, that hundreds would have to be helped to higher ground because lives were endangered and homes destroyed from flooded neighborhoods in Wayne, New Jersey. Everything's ruined, right? Your baby pictures are ruined? Yep, I think. To Cranston, Rhode Island. I'm completely flooded out. It wasn't just the water. The weather's going to get better. This was a true northeast storm that made it hard to move or even stand, that packed a wallop up and down the coast. It's like being in a crate, being hit by a sledgehammer. And that with the ground saturated by previous storms and the strongest winds roaring at a steady gale force, century-old trees were pushed over from the roots. So you're the tree guy. Dan Agro has been the tree expert in Greenwich for decades. There were many gusts, and I think it just, it wore them down over a period of time. You know, hours? Just a, uh, I'd say about 30 hours. At its peak, the storm left a half million people without power, leaving utility companies scrambling to get customers back online. We're going to have everyone back. We're hoping uh, by Wednesday with a few stragglers into Thursday. This is the worst storm I've ever seen. Uh, probably the worst storm that a lot of you have seen. A late winter punishment just days from the start of spring. And there are still more than 200,000 customers without power, and that's just in Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey. And many of the 50 schools that were closed today in the tri-state area will be closed tomorrow as well. Right? All right, Mike Taibbi in Hard Hit Greenwich, Connecticut. Mike, thanks for that. We get more tonight from one of the experts at the Weather Channel, where Steve Lyons has been tracking all of this. Steve, we've all covered and lived through storms worse than this, though I've never seen anything like this. So many of us are going home to homes without power still. At one point Saturday, Day, the weather was being pushed from New York to Kansas City west the wrong way. It's still going on tonight. Boston's taking it on the nose. What's going on here? Boy, it's a powerful system, and it all started in the Midwest, basically. Uh, this system over here that was in Arizona merged with the system in the Midwest here, and all fueled by a jet stream down here to the south. We can put all these together and put them in motion and watch this big spiral come up here and move toward the east coast and with this subtropical jet stream spin up off the east coast right here this is a four day loop by the way and as it comes up there you see the system coming right there off the east coast and comes up and it stops the reason it stopped is because high pressure is up here to the north and that high pressure to the north has blocked it and so it's still sitting off the jersey coast bringing some heavy rain with it because of the persistence and the strong winds with that high pressure butting up against low pressure all right, Steve Lyons at the Weather Channel. All of this gets to come with an El Nino year in our weather. Steve, thanks. News arrived this past weekend that the ongoing drug war in Mexico has taken a serious and ugly new turn with the death of Americans gunned down in the streets of a Mexican city. NBC's Mark Potter has been following this story for us. He's with us tonight from El Paso, just north of the U.S.-Mexico border there. Mark, good evening. And good evening to you, Brian. Mexican police working these cases are being joined by U.S. officials from the FBI, the DEA, and other agencies. And they're bringing with them a network of intelligence gatherers to try to locate the killers. The killings of two of the three Americans occurred within feet of the U.S. border at this intersection in downtown Ciudad Juarez, right next to the mayor's office. There's a, a police station very close. Uh, the, uh, this is a very patrolled street. Uh, Over the U.S. side of the border there in El Paso, Texas tonight, Mark, thank. Thanks. An update tonight on where health care reform stands. The House has started preliminary votes aimed at moving, moving a bill to a final vote. By the end of this week, and President Obama traveled to Ohio for one last campaign style rally where a shout out from the audience gave him a chance to road test a new catchphrase. We need courage. There's a lot of hand wringing going on. We hear a lot of people in Washington talking about politics, talking about what this means in November, talking about the poll numbers for Democrats and Republicans. We need courage. That's why I came here today. We need courage. 
The president is set to leave for an already postponed trip to Asia Sunday morning. Hopes to have a bill in front of them by then, he says. He said late today he thinks the votes will be there to make it happen. President Obama may get another Supreme Court appointment sooner than anyone thought. When Justice John Paul Stevens turns 90 next month, he tells the New Yorker magazine he will decide whether to retire now or later. Stevens was appointed by President Ford back in 1975, six presidents ago. He's about to become the third longest serving justice and is the head of the liberal wing of the court. When nightly news continues on a Monday night, rewriting the rules, leaving behind the old no child left behind law, changes coming soon to a school near you. And later, a modern day gold rush. You own the land. How come you're not getting a cut of it? Tonight's Fleecing of America. The Obama administration is rolling out a plan to revamp one of President Bush's signatures, the No Child Left Behind law, which changed the way public schools across the country teach and how they are graded. Here is our education correspondent, Rahema Ellis. What does it mean when somebody talks with you? With the plan for education reform, President Obama is making good on a campaign promise. Don't come up with this law called No Child Left Behind and then leave the money behind. Lay out exactly. On MSNBC's Morning Joe today, Education Secretary Arne Duncan. The previous law was too punitive. It was too prescriptive. It actually led to a dumbing down, a lowering of standards, and it narrowed the curriculum. We want to reverse all that. As part of the administration's blueprint for reform, every child should graduate high school ready for college and a career by 2020. Annual tests would measure subjects beyond reading and math. Rahima Ellis, NBC Thank News, you. New York. And we're back in a moment with memories of a man who made a career doing the impossible. You hear the song, you think of one thing, Mission Impossible. When you think of Mission Impossible, you think of Mr. Phelps, as in, good morning, Mr. Phelps, as in, this tape will self-destruct, and that man, of course, was Peter Graves. Peter Graves died on Sunday in Los Angeles. Not many people knew he was the brother of Gunsmoke star James Arness. And while Graves had a film career of his own, he was best known for that TV role. And then we all found out that Peter Graves had a sense of humor, his role as Captain over in airplane gave us some no, of the most like quoted the comedy lines of the modern era. I have an emergency call for you on line five from a Mr. Ham. All right, give me Ham on five. Hold the mail. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Joey, you like movies about gladiators? Peter Graves was the longtime host of Biography on A&E, was the subject of one back in 1997. The critic Ken Tucker today called Peter Graves smart, dexterous, smooth, cool, and dashing. He was indeed all of those things. Peter Graves was 83 years old. New incentive for smokers to quit. A big new study out today says quitting can improve artery function, actually make blood vessels healthier, lowering the risk of heart disease. They warn of a downside that we're all aware of, of course. Smokers who quit do tend to put on the weight, at least at the outset. Continental Airlines is ending free food in flight on all U.S. flights under six hours, and that's just about all of them. Whatever it's going to cost passengers to eat while in the air, the airline says, it's worth upwards of $36 million in added revenue. As soccer fans begin to get all frothed up about the World Cup, bad news for Becks. David Beckham tore his Achilles tendon playing for Milan yesterday. He was operated on today. He now faces weeks of recovery and rehab. Tough injury. May not be able to play in the World Cup, which starts June 11th in South Africa. We're back in a moment with tonight's Fleecing of America report. It's all about some gold gold mines you have a stake in. We're back as promised with our Fleecing of America report, kicking off a series of reports all this week. You may not know it, but you own some gold mines, actually the public land where gold, silver, even uranium are dug out of the earth. 
You might be wondering about now what you have to show for all that. We have an answer tonight from our senior investigative correspondent, Lisa Myers. Fire in the hole, Leo. The Twin Creeks gold mine in Nevada. Look at all that gold floating through the air. Yeah. <laughs> Some of that gold floating through the air. Myers, NBC News, Elko, Nevada. Tomorrow night here as we continue how some people are being forced to buy flood insurance and why it's an example of the fleecing of America. For now, though, that's our broadcast for this Monday night as we start off a new week. Thank you, as always, for being with us. I'm Brian Williams. We hope to see you right back here tomorrow evening. Good night.